Welcome, to the Corp Vault channel. In this video we will continue discussing, how to configure, VMware vCenter client for backup in Convault. Please, like, share, comment or suggest. Subscribe for more videos, and, you can follow us on Instagram. In our previous video, we discussed, how to create VMware vCenter client and Convault options at various levels. In this video, we will continue discussing other available options, and configure sub-client for VM backup. Right-click on the vCenter client. All tasks. Most of the options you already know. Job status on errors. We will try to create a separate video for this. This option helps to add a rule, to monitor errors during backup, and mark the job with set result like, completed with error, or completed, or failed. You can add more error decision rules, or threshold rules, for the selected agent, and set how to mark the job when the error seen, or reported. You can also set the priority for the decision rule, or threshold rule, that you created. Share client configuration. You can share the client configuration, from one com cell to another, ideally, to run indexing queries and queue commands. Do note, after verifying that the target com cell is available, the source com cell will access the target com cell, and add the source client as a deconfigured client. Run analytics. You can perform day to analytics, to collect analytics information about the client, but, running day to analytics on a VM client is not supported. Running analytics on VM clients, is only supported at the client group level for client groups that contain VMs, not pseudo clients such as the virtual server agent. Also, you can run analytics on virtual machine groups, when file indexing is enabled. You are already aware of these other options. Select properties. We will discuss, how to enable IntelliSnap, from client level. Select advanced. Advanced client properties. General tab. From here, you enable IntelliSnap, and this is from client level, which gets applied to all sub-clients. Manager A, provides access to the array management window, which helps you to add, or modify, access information for an array. Array management. This is the list, displays all the available arrays in the com cell. You can associate any array, to perform the IntelliSnap backup. Name of the array. Control host, is the name of the device manager server, where the array was configured. The user account to be used for accessing the array. Snap vendor name, is the name of the selected snapshot engine vendor, for the array. Type of array. Description, is the additional information specified for the array. Click add, to access the array management dialog box, which enables you to add access information for an array. Let's select our array. Click edit, to edit the array information. Array properties. General tab. Snap vendor is, Convault VSA that we configured. Name specifies the identification information for the storage array. In our case, it is the vCenter. For arrays that use control host, this field specifies the name of the device manager server, where the array is configured. Credentials is the name of the user account, that has rights to access the array. Use description field, to enter a description about the entity. This description can include information about the entity's content, cautionary notes, etc. Array controllers tab. Available array controllers, contains the list of available array controllers. Selected array controllers, shows the list of array controllers, selected from the list of available array controllers. Array controller roles, contains the list of roles for the selected array controllers. For snap pruning operation, use only controllers which are selected for pruning. The selected media agent can perform pruning operations on the storage array. Security tab. We have already discussed this window. Activity tab. Disable automatic cleanup snap pruning and unmounts. This option help enabling, and disabling, the activity of a storage array, 
that is, if you need to temporarily stop pruning operations, or unmount operations, then you can disable the automatic cleanup of snapshots in the storage array. You can select an entry, and click delete, to delete the access information for an array. List snaps, shows the list of snapshots corresponding to the selected array. Snaps created during IntelliSnap operation. Volume view. This window provides, volume related information for the snapshots. Source client, is the client from which the snapshot creation operation is initiated. Source path, is the local mount location for the LUN, on the source client computer. Mount host, is the destination client computer where the snapshot is mounted. Mount path, is the location where the snapshot is mounted. App type name, is the name of the application for which the snapshot is created. There are other columns, like, job ID of the snapshot creation operation. Mount status, to show whether a snapshot is mounted or not. Mount status update time, is the time when the mount status of a snapshot was last updated. Creation time, that is the time when the snapshot was created. Storage policy, which was used while performing the IntelliSnap backup. Storage policy copy, used for creation of snapshot. Copy type, of the storage policy copy. Disk view. This window provides, disk related information for the snapshots. Snapshot engine, displays the name of the snapshot engine used for creation of snapshot. Control host, is the identification information for the array. Snap status, is the status of the snapshot. Snap source device, is the device from which, the snapshot creation operation is initiated. Snap device name, is the name of the snapshot device, used for creating the snapshot. Snap name, is the unique identifier for a snapshot. Reconcile snaps. Use reconcile snaps to start snap reconciliation, that is, to check for missing snapshots, and mark jobs corresponding to the missing snapshots as invalid. Do note, it is highly recommended that you do not delete an array, which has snapshots associated with it. All snapshots associated with a deleted array are no longer valid, and cannot be used for any data recovery operations. Right click on the sub client. Most of these options, you are already aware. Live sync. You can configure and monitor live sync from here. We won't be able to cover this topic in detail. We will try to create a separate video for this. The live sync feature enables incremental replication from a backup of a source virtual machine to a synced copy of the destination virtual machine. The live sync operation opens the destination VM, and applies changes from the source VM backups, since the last sync point. You can replicate virtual machines to vCenter, or to vCloud. The live sync feature can initiate replication automatically after backups, or on a scheduled basis, without requiring any additional action from users. If no new backups have been run since the last live sync, the scheduled live sync does not run. Please note, for IntelliSnap backups, you can use a virtual machine snapshot as the source for live sync operations. Create VM clients. You can discover virtual machines, or instances, for a sub-client, and create VM clients in the Comcell console, before you perform any backup operations. After you create VM clients, you can perform remote installation, for application-aware backup of a virtual machine. Specify VM ownership and permissions. Or, assign VMs to smart client computer groups. You can configure continuous replication from here. Continuous replication requires, VSA proxies at the source and destination sites, and configure VMware hypervisors for the source and destination sites. Continuous replication uses block level replication, to synchronize block devices, or virtual machine disks continuously streaming updates from source to destination VMs. Select Properties Sub-Client Properties General Tab Client Name, 
is the name of the client computer. A data agent displays the name of the installed agent. Backup set is the name of the backup set to which this subclient belongs. Subclient name is the name of this subclient. You can rename the name of the subclient if needed. Time information displays client time zone. Transport mode for VMware. From here, you can select the transport mode to use for this subclient. Each available mode represents a different system environment scenario. By default, the transport mode for VMware is set to auto. The transport mode is selected automatically, depending on the proxy computer used for backup, and the virtual machines included in the backup. You can force a specific transport mode, by selecting one from the list. Sound mode. Data is read directly from the storage, where virtual machines reside. This is also referred to as LAN free, since no data is transferred over the network. The LUNs containing the virtual machine disks must be visible to the virtual server agent server to support SAN mode backups. SAN mode is supported when using storage connected over fiber channel or iSCSI. Hot add. The virtual server agent is installed on a virtual machine residing on an ESX server. Hot add mode can achieve close to SAN mode performance if SAN is not available. The term hot add refers to the way the backups are completed. In hot add, the data volumes containing the virtual machines to be included in the backup are automatically mounted to the virtual machine. NBD or NBD SSL. NBD network block device and NBD SSL encrypted NBD transmit data over the ESX server's TCP IP connection. This can be the production network or a dedicated backup network. NAS Network Attached Storage Transport Mode enables the VSA proxy to read data directly from a network file server NFS, without going through an ESX host or transferring data over the LAN. With automatic transport mode selection, the NAS transport mode is selected if NAS storage is connected to the ESX host. The VSA must have access to the data store NFS volume exports that provides storage for virtual machine disks. The ESX host is contacted only to coordinate access to the NFS data store. Please note, in most scenarios, restores using SAN and hot add transport are faster than NBD or NBD SSL operations, but SAN restores using thin disk provisioning can be slower than LAN restores. Performance can be improved by using NBD for thin disk provisioning, or by setting the transport mode to SAN, and specifying thick eager zero disk provisioning. Content tab. Contents of subclient displays a list of vCenter objects included as content for this subclient. Type displays the type of content. The default is all unprotected VMs, means all virtual machines from the vCenter are automatically included as subclient content. If you are using multiple rules for automatic content selection, the content type is displayed as rule. Name displays the name of the content. Default is root, that is, backslash, but if you are using multiple rules for automatic content selection, the content name is displayed as custom rule. If you move the pointer over the rule, the description of the rule appears. Click Add button to add rules for automatic content selection. We have already discussed this window, hence skipping it. Click Browse button to browse the vCenter and select objects on the vCenter as the content of the subclient. Select any rule from the contents of subclient list and click Edit button to edit the rule. Likewise, Select any rule from the contents of subclient list and click delete button to delete the rule. Click preview button to view the list of virtual machines included in the subclient. It might take some time to display the results, so be patient. Filters are criteria to exclude virtual machines or disks from backups. Please note 
If a virtual machine is explicitly added to the content of a sub-client, the virtual machine will be discovered by its GUID. If the display name changes later, the machine is still included in the sub-client, as long as its GUID remains the same. Any virtual machines identified in a sub-client, and discovered by their GUIDs, will not be filtered from backups. Show Backup Set Filters Select this option, to display filters defined at both the sub-client, and backup set levels. When this option is cleared, only sub-client filters are shown on this tab, but backup set filters are still enforced. VM Filters displays the list of defined filters. Click Add button to open the Add Filters dialog box. We have already discussed in this window, how to filter virtual machines based on specific criteria. Click Browse button to open the Browse dialog box, which provides hierarchical views of the vCenter server and inventory. Select a VM filter entry and click Edit to modify the filter, or Delete to remove the filter from the sub-client. VM Disk Filters, is used to define criteria for filtering virtual machine disks from any sub-client. These options work the same way as above. Pre-Post Process tab Pre-Backup Process Enter a path of the process, to run before the backup phase. Please note, if there are spaces in the name and path, provide a string beginning with an opening quotation mark, and ends with a closing quotation mark. Post-Backup Process Enter a path of the process, to run after the backup phase. Do take care of the spaces by providing an opening quotation mark, and ending with a closing quotation mark. Run post backup process for all attempts. Specifies whether this process will execute for all attempts to run the phase. Selecting this option will execute the post backup process even for situations, where the job phase is interrupted, suspended, or fails. Pre-snap process. Enter a path of the process to run before VM snap is taken. Post snap process. Enter a path of the process, to run after the VM snap is created. Do take care of the spaces by providing an opening quotation mark, and ending with a closing quotation mark. Run as. Displays the user account used to run the pre-processes and post processes. Select change, if you want to add or modify the user account that has permission to run the pre-post processes. We have already discussed Security tab, Storage Device tab, Data Storage Policy. Select a storage policy from the list to which backups will be associated. Use Data Paths option to view, or modify the data paths, associated with the primary storage policy copy of the selected storage policy. This would help to route the data between data paths, when you see issues with a particular data path. Incremental storage policy is not applicable to this kind of backups. Use Create Storage Policy to launch the Create a Storage Policy wizard for creating a new storage policy. Data Transfer Option tab. Software Compression. You can enable Software Compression on Client or on Media Agent or use Storage Policy Settings or turn it off. Please note, hardware compression has priority over the software compression. Software compression option will take effect, when the data path is associated with a disk library, or when hardware compression is disabled, in the data path associated with tape libraries. Resource tuning, indicates the processes used by the client to transfer data, and whether bandwidth throttling is enabled or not. Network agents specifies the number of data pipes, or processes, that the client uses to transfer data over a network. Increasing this value may provide better throughput, if the network and the network configuration in your environment can support it. The default value is 2, and a maximum of 4 can be set if necessary. Throttle networks bandwidth in MB per hour. By default this option is not selected, and therefore the throughput is not controlled. When selected, the backup throughput is controlled. You can specify a value for the throughput. By default, this is set to 500. The minimum value is 2 megabytes, and the maximum you can set is approximately 2 petabyte. Deduplication tab. Enable deduplication. 
Use this option to enable or disable the duplication for the sub client. If enabled, you can choose to generate the signature on the client or on the media agent computer. The deduplication is supported on disk storage devices, therefore, the deduplication options are applicable only if the sub client is associated with a storage policy containing disk storage. Activity Control tab By default, Enable Backup is checked. If you clear this option then backups will be started as per schedule, but a fail to start, with reason data management activity is disabled. When you clear this option, you get another option to enable backup after a delay. You can choose the option to select a specific date and time, when the backup activity can be enabled. Due to the length of content to cover, we will split this video into one more part. This is the end of part 2. We will see you in the next part. Do subscribe to our channel for more videos, if not already done so. Do subscribe for more videos.